If you've been dealing with anxious thoughts, overthinking, procrastination, and really finding yourself stuck in a cycle of comparing and hiding behind the scenes, and you're exhausted, you are ready to see what God has for you and to become all that he's called you to be. I wanna share my testimony about how God helped me to overcome anxious thoughts and overthinking because there is really freedom for this. So many of you have been hiding behind the scenes for so long. You've been stuck in cycles of comparison and I know and I feel that you're ready to break out of that. And I know that so many of you have been dealing with this and the word says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So it is my hope that as I share my testimony and a lot of the scriptures that aided in my deliverance, that God would heal you as well and that you would finally find freedom. Because as you're watching, there is a call on your life. There is something that God wants you to do and it requires you to be confident. It requires you to be bold and you cannot do that when you are bound by overthinking. So let's go ahead and get into my testimony. So for as long as I can remember, I had been dealing with anxiety, even to about the age of seven or eight. And I know that's kind of young and obviously I didn't have the language to describe what anxiousness was, but I remember like my family was always running late to everything. So I remember rushing out the house, like, and just feeling all this fear about missing important moments. I'm talking like graduations, events, like we were always running late. And so how I began to cope with that is I began to be like, towards my middle school years, when I started to have more control over my schedule, I started overcompensating in time. I remember that even if the event was at like two o'clock in the afternoon, I would be getting ready and prepared at 9 a.m. And so that's not really normal. It was like a trauma response to always being late. So in addition to always being late, my house was really chaotic. I grew up in the era where everybody had like a drawer specifically for sauces and like a drawer that was full of papers. And, and so for me, it felt like I could never find what I needed. And I remember it just feeling like my papers were all over the place and it just produced this spirit of like fear in me, which I didn't realize at the time. And so I began to overcompensate for that by organizing every single thing in my room. I was that kid who rearranged their furniture in their room like every single month. I used to organize my desk in school. I used to get paid actually to clean other people's desks out and organize their binders and things like that. As you can remember being in school, there was always the kid who had the binder with the papers overflowing out of their backpacks and all of that. That was never me. I was the person that was literally organizing every single thing. I had my hole puncher, my organizing system, so I have been like this for a very long time. And so I thought that it was mild. It was just kind of my personality. And so right around the time I was in college, I started developing even more anxiety because I was in a new place. I didn't know anyone. And then there was so much competition in the field that I was in. So at the time I was an art major and I remember just seeing that everybody was so much more talented than me. And so because I was in school and I was getting graded for everything that I was doing, including my art, which at the time was creative expression for me, I remember I began to associate my confidence with my performance. If I performed well, if I got good grades, then my confidence increased. If I did not perform well, if I was off my game, I began to really beat myself up. And so what that did for me is it started to develop not only anxiety and overthinking, but also comparison and perfectionism. I literally had spent my whole life as I was looking back trying to perform in order to prove that I was good enough, even though I never felt like I was enough. And so this is all before I really even developed a relationship with Christ. But once I got to know Christ and started to build my relationship, I immediately went into like legalism and performance, trying to do every single thing by the book. And of course, I always fell short of that because nobody is perfect. But what happened was all of those little seeds and those moments that I experienced over my life, they started to kind of transform and mold my personality. And I would assume that this is just the way that things were. And so when God began to call me to do certain things that were completely out of my comfort zone, my first response was to literally reject them because I always felt like I was not good enough. I always felt like somebody else was just always going to do things better than me. A lot of my decisions were just rooted in fear. And so I remember this really started to come to a head when God was calling me to become an entrepreneur. And I remember I was riddled with, every time he would tell me to do something, I would be like, no, 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 I can't do that. Like, that's just too much. Or I, he would give me an instruction and I would immediately dismiss it. Or an opportunity would open and I would be like, no, 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 I can't do that. I'm not ready for that. Like, even when it came to like me doing like my photography, people would ask me to do stuff. And even though like I felt like my work was good, 
for some reason, like when the opportunities would come up, my mind began to like just self-destruct and I would just talk myself out of these opportunities. It happened even when I was doing design work, I would get opportunities to do different design work and I would say, oh, you know what? You should just go to so-and-so because they would do it better. I will always just kind of like push the attention off of me onto other people because I really was stuck and trapped in my mind. And even I remember in like 2019, um, when I was doing a fast, I began to ask the Lord, like, you know, what is going to be like my signature service? What are some of the things that you want me to create? And that's actually when I got the idea for Organize My Thoughts. Now, I didn't start Organize My Thoughts, even though I had that idea in 2019, until 2022. And even then, he had given me the idea to start a journal that would help people to overcome anxious thoughts and all of these things. And I didn't touch it for three years. I literally got the idea, closed my notebook, and put it away because I just kept convincing myself that it would never be good enough, that I could just wait and wait and wait until I felt more confident, until I felt more qualified. Because at the time, like I said, I was in a whole nother industry that had nothing to do with mindset or faith or anything like that. So I was just like, oh Lord, like we'll just put this away. And literally, like when I tell you guys I was sabotaging opportunity after opportunity, everybody was saying how talented I was and how I was going to make it. And it's like my mind had convinced me that like that was not true. Like all these people were just being nice. They were lying to me. Like it was really bad. And I didn't know how bad it was until literally I got to a point where I was so frustrated with myself because I felt like I should have been been further along and I remember that's when the Lord really started to reveal that I was dealing with not just rejection but also just a deep heavy set fear and so many other things like that and and so I went through years of having the Lord teach me how to take my thoughts captive and how to take authority over the spirit of fear. And also by walking through deliverance with the Holy Spirit, because these were things like these are spirits. There's a spirit of rejection, a spirit of fear. And sometimes we're so busy treating the symptoms like the anxious thoughts or the comparison, but the root of those things are rejection and fear. And so literally I had to walk through deliverance with the Lord to even be able to get to a place where I could feel confident and the instructions that he was giving me because the overthinking had gotten so bad it was to the point where I was even overthinking what God was saying to me he would say things to me and I would dismiss it like it was my own voice or like I was missing something like it was really bad and so I wanted to share this because here I am now, like years later, after doing all of the work that the Lord had instructed me with, I've learned how to take my thoughts captive. I've learned how to literally, when I'm feeling overwhelmed and anxious, pray first before I do anything else. I've learned how to put my confidence in the Lord and not in myself, and it has made such a big difference. And literally, there was a time in my life where I could not produce anything because I was so stuck in my mind. And now the, the grace and the healing that the Lord has brought me through has allowed me to be obedient and be obedient quickly and see the fruits of that. This channel would have never been a thing a couple of years ago because my mind was such in a broken place. But even in the midst of my brokenness, when I wasn't ready to share what I was going through, when I was embarrassed because I felt like I was so far behind, God used my story and gave language to people who were in the same place. And I have a video that talks about this. It's called Heal As You Go. And that was coming from a personal testimony because the Lord was having me to share all of these vulnerable things that I was going through, even as someone who's qualified. Like I went to college, I have all the knowledge and all those things, and I had the experience and even the body of work to prove it, but yet my mind was still sabotaging me. So I had to share some very vulnerable things, even in the beginning of that, that I was not ready to share. But I can look back and see how even the Lord was using my healing for his glory. And so for those of you who are, feel like you're in the middle of something and God has given you an idea and you're like, oh, I'm not ready. I'm not qualified. Like God is going to use all of that for his glory. There are going to be people who need to see where you are right now, how you're feeling right now, how you're working through the issues that have been plaguing you right now, because the language matters. And that wasn't even in my notes to talk about, but I feel like that's really important. You don't have to wait until you're fully healed to be obedient. Like God is going to use all the things that you feel like weaknesses for his glory. And somebody needs to hear exactly what you're going through and how you're working your way through it. 
So with that being said, there is healing from overthinking. There is healing from the spirit of rejection and fear. You do not have to stay bound. And so don't get me wrong, just because you're walking through your healing process, don't feel like because those thoughts begin to come up or you're tempted to believe those things that you're not healed or you're not delivered. The enemy walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. So his job is literally to accuse you, to plant thoughts in your mind that will try to get you off track, that will try to get you back in mental bondage. But God has given you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, including the thoughts that are trying to exalt themselves against God. The word of God says to cast down every single anxious thought that exalts itself up against the knowledge of God. He's given you authority over those things. And so I know it can be discouraging, even if you're in the middle of your healing process right now and you felt like you should have been stopped overthinking. You felt like you should have been stopped comparing yourself. The temptation to compare, the temptation to overthink will present itself because it's coming from the enemy. But you do not have to give in. You have authority over those things. And if you start to practice mind management using the word of God, you will see the fruit of that. So don't be discouraged and don't feel like you need to give up. It doesn't matter how long you have been dealing with this. There is freedom in that. And when Jesus sets you free, you are free indeed. And I'm a living testimony of that. I have a video called How to Get Out of Your Head that walks through the exact steps that I took. So I'm going to link that above. But before we go, I just want to share three scriptures that have been instrumental in my healing process from overthinking anxiety and fear. So the first scripture that I want to share is in Galatians 1 verse 10. And this talks about overcoming the fear of man. Now, this is crucial because a lot of the reasons why we don't move forward or why we overthink is because we're worried about what people will say about us. We're worried about, you know, how people will judge us. But this scripture was really instrumental in reminding me of why I'm doing what I'm doing. And so it says, am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Again, when you're in those places and you're overthinking what it is that God called you to do because you're worried about what people will say about you, you have to remind yourself, are you trying to please man or are you trying to please God? Ultimately, as a believer, you should be doing all things unto God, not unto man. The same people that are judging you are probably the same people that need what you have to say. The same people that are judging you are probably the same ones being disobedient. And even sometimes what you feel like people are going to judge you or say about you is just made up in your mind. And it's literally false evidence appearing real. Sometimes we can get to the point where we start making up responses or assuming what people will say, but they're not even worried about us. So spend your time focusing on God. And when those thoughts begin to come up, when you feel that thought that says, you know, these people are going to say something about me or they're going to think I'm crazy. They're going to think I'm weird. They're going to think I look dumb. Remind yourself that you're not here to please man. You're here to please God. And remember, there is authority. There's power in the word of God. So you're not just saying this like an affirmation. You're using your authority and the word of God to speak against the attacks of the enemy. Now, the second scripture that has been instrumental in my healing process is in Galatians 6 verse 4. And this scripture is talking about comparison. And this is a huge one. Like anytime comparison starts to come up in your mind, use this scripture against it. And it says, pay careful attention to your own work for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. And you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. This scripture has been instrumental in my journey because I feel like comparison is one of the things that really kept me stuck. I would go and I would try to research, you know, how other people were doing what God called me to do. And I would get so caught up in how theirs looked and how they were more well-spoken than me. And I would get in these places where I would just be like, you know what, just forget it. Like there's enough people doing this and I would just self-sabotage and just not do it. And I had to get to a point where I could execute and just focus on what the Lord called me to do. And the more I began to work under the grace of God and just focus on my assignment, the more joy I had, the more proud of myself that I felt because I didn't have to worry about anybody else. I literally unfollowed pretty much everyone and I literally locked into what God had called me to do and I began to see the fruit of that, not only the physical fruit, but also like the mental and emotional fruit of the peace that God had promised me. So if you're struggling with comparison, take Galatians 6 verse 4 to prayer and begin to speak it out of your mouth every single time. It does not fail. The word of God does not fail. The last scripture that has been instrumental in my healing is 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. And this scripture specifically reminds us of the authority that we have over any type of thought. But specifically, I use it over anxious thoughts or anything that is not of God. And it reads, 
We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. This scripture is so crucial because again, the enemy will constantly try to plant thoughts into your mind to try to make you fearful or make you anxious. But you have authority over those things, but you have to use it to cast it down and make it obedient to what God said about you. God says that you have a sound mind. So if you're not feeling like you have a sound mind, there's a thought that's trying to present itself against the truth of what God said, cast it down. And in place of it, begin to speak that you have a sound mind, right? That you don't need to be anxious for anything, that God has given you peace that surpasses all understanding. You have to actively use the authority that Christ has given you if you want to see victory from these anxious thoughts and overthinking. So I know I shared a lot and I pray that my testimony has been encouraging to you. I will leave all of the scriptures that I link below and the link to the video that talks about step by step on how to get out of your head. But there is freedom for this. God wants you to be free from this. He wants you to have a sound mind. He wants you to be confident, bold, and excited about the things that he has for you to do. And you do not have to be stuck in a yoke of bondage for the rest of your life. There is healing. So I pray that you will begin to take this into your time with God and I pray that you will be sensitive to the voice of the Lord and that any place in your heart that feels hardened, that feels afraid, that feels anxious, that he will come in and he will bring healing because he will. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you on the next video.